Hi, I'm Nick Maselli. At TD Bank, we believe all citizens need to be informed about the important financial issues that affect their daily lives. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, County College of Morris, Connecting, Learning, and Life, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, Activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chest Challenge, TD Bank, and by PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Welcome to the uh, Tisch WNET studio here in the heart of Lincoln Center. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce uh, Nora O'Donnell. You know her. Wake up to the, <laughs> in the morning to her. To co-host CBS This Morning. How you doing? Great. I get up pretty early in the morning, How but early? it's the best job I've ever had. How early? Sometimes 4 o'clock, sometimes earlier. Depends on what's the news of the day, what the type of guests we may have that day. But like anybody, I try and sleep as late as I can. <laughs> now, I told you before, we had one of your colleagues in here recently. Charlie Rose uh, knows our world very yes. well, the public broadcasting world. Um, but the other guest, the other colleague you had, Gail. Gail King. Is sitting in that chair just a few months back complaining about the, she said, we didn't pay our electric bill, it was too cold. <laughs> you think it's just fine, don't you? I think it's just fine in here, yes. She's Not to character. disagree with my dear friend, Gail King. She's a character. Yeah, she's so much fun. And if you watch our show, you'll see how much chemistry there is between Charlie and Gail and myself. And it's the stuff that TV executives work to try and make. And certainly when I joined the show, we didn't know that we would have that. But we were instantly friends, and hopefully that shows you know, every morning on the show because it makes it fun for us to do the show. And so people say that's what they like to see. And your executive well. producer is a good friend of ours. Yes, our executive producer, Chris Licht, uh, who I had worked with over at MSNBC. He created Morning Joe. Yep, he and sure now did. he has helped to recreate CBS uh, this morning. And we've now had the highest ratings for our show in the past 20 years. By the way, I'm also plugging because log on to our site. You'll see the interview that we did with Chris just a few months back as well. Um, because you've had such an interesting background in broadcasting, you come to this situation. Morning television, very different than the work you had been doing at NBC, new, real newsy stuff, MSNBC stuff. You and I actually did some stuff together, real newsy stuff when I was a, a media analyst over at MSNBC. It was very hardcore news. Well, my background is in political reporting. Yes. So I covered the White House, I covered Congress, I covered the Pentagon. Yes. Um, I've covered five different presidential elections. I traveled ar around the globe. Um, with Secretary Rumsfeld after 9-11, including to Afghanistan, all over the world. So my background was in political reporting. And then I was asked to come and co-host here in New York and do a morning show. And Were I just thought, at all? No, because I was just filling in for somebody and just came up to, and they said, wow, you're so good, we'd like to offer you the job. So yes, I was reluctant <laughs> because my life, and I have three young kids, was in Washington, D.C. Um, but it's New York City, and you know, I think one of the things I learned you know, as, as a professional was to take risks, you know, and this was an adventure and go on the adventure and, you know, to have the opportunity to co-host a morning show um, is kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity because I do believe that morning TV is the crown jewel of broadcast journalism. Really? I do. No because... longer, hey, the evening news at six, th no, that's not it? Well, look, I mean, you get two hours of at least of television in the morning. Uh, the evening news is usually about, it's 30 minutes, but after commercials, it's about 20 minutes. So you'll see sometimes the profit center at some of the networks is in the morning. Um, we get the opportunity to sort of set the agenda in the morning. If something has been breaking overnight, we get the first crack at the news, right. whether it's interviewing the head of the CDC or the vice president of the United States after a major world news event. A lot of stuff happens on morning television, and I think that's where I, a lot of people always want to watch right when they get up in the morning, turn on the coffee, get the information they need mm. to know before they get out the door. And what we're doing at CBS is we right. say the news is back in the morning. You don't see cooking segments on our show. 
Um, you don't see concerts. What we're doing is original reporting and great storytelling in the tradition of CBS News. Well, let's uh, talk more about that. I told you before we got on the air that one of the interviews that you did recently, we're doing this in, um, toward the back end of 2014. We'll see how things play out. But the NFL in the news, uh, big time in terms of this ongoing domestic uh, violence situation, Ray Rice situation just triggered it. Mm -hmm. You did the first, the exclusive, the most in-depth interview that I've seen with uh, Roger Goodell. We're looking at some video of it right now. Mm -hmm. When you were sitting there with him, asking him very tough questions, he's responding however he chooses to, however he was prepped to, his business. Did you know you had something special? Well, look, this was an incredibly um, important story because while domestic violence has been a problem in the NFL for a long time, um, and we've seen the reports of players being arrested, this was the first time we had video of a player, Ray Rice of the Baltimore Ravens, actually punching out his then girlfriend. So it was hard to deny when you visually see exactly what happened. We had the first interview with Roger Goodell and many people sort of asked me, was it tense in the room? Was it difficult? I felt like I just asked very simple, straightforward questions, which is why the NFL hadn't seen this second tape, why no one in the NFL had seen this tape, despite the fact that the NFL has some of the best security mm -hmm. in the country. They hire everybody, former FBI directors, everybody. So it was a pretty straightforward interview, and I think that interview will stand the test of time as we learn more, and the NFL conducts its own investigation about why they didn't know the second tape. But I looked at that interview as an interesting opportunity. As someone who interviews presidents and secretaries of defense, this was different for me to interview someone in the sports world, but the same questions are there. You know, why didn't you know? Was there a cover-up? Um, Leadership questions. Well, yeah, leadership questions. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. As a student of leadership who tries to look at every situation in terms of how someone um, handles leadership, you've interviewed world leaders. Mm -hmm. You've interviewed President Obama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you interview him, a lot of folks we've had sit in this seat come from some of the cable news mm -hmm. uh, networks that you know very well, yeah. previous background there. A lot of those folks said, yeah, I have an orientation. I have a political orientation. And yes, that orientation does, in fact, influence my questioning. Yeah. Does yours? I don't. You know, I'm, I'm an objective journalist. Um, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Um, I am right down the middle, and that's how I ask my questions. You and don't even I think, care who's sitting in that seat in terms of their ideology or yours. Look, I think if you if you look at my Twitter feed um, or some of the responses, you know, someone is accusing me of... By the way, you're putting, it up, you're putting of, up yours the whole time. Yes, People can find out. Go ahead. Yeah, someone is accusing me of bias on one side or bias on the other side. The most important thing to me is, and I take very seriously my job as a journalist, is that it is very important to question leaders and people in positions of power. And I think the media has a responsibility to do that um, as straightforward as they can and try and get the answers for, for the people. A good example, um, the reporter at the Washington Post, Carol Linning, who has done the reporting on these Secret Service failures. The Secret Service told all of us, told the American people that this intruder only got to the North Portico door of the White House. Had it not been for the media, we would not have known that this intruder actually made 100 feet into the White House, past the stairway that goes right up to the private residence. And did have a knife in the initial AP and report, said he was unarmed. That's not right. Not true, only exposed because of the media. Right. That's only the most recent example. As we, we speak right now. Yeah. I mean, we can talk about the NSA and what our government's been doing in terms of spying on people. We can go all the way back to Watergate about the important role that the media plays. So I take that um, role and responsibility very seriously. Can I ask you about that book you have right there? Oh, yes. Baby my, Love? My other Look, what's this segue? My None at other all. <laughs> very important responsibility are these three people. Can my, a, my little, Bob, can we get a shot of this? My, my, little, Hold it up. my little jewels, Grace, Grace Henry and Riley. There you can see we were at the Cherry Blossom Festival. They're a little bigger now, but we wrote this book. My husband, there you see there, he's a chef in Washington. Chef Jeffs is the name of his. Chef? Jeffs. Go ahead. Uh, in Washington. He has six restaurants. And when my kids were born, we decided to make their baby food um, from scratch. And the interesting thing that I learned is, as someone who's not a good cook, and I'm married to a chef, that making baby food is pretty easy. It's just like making applesauce or puree. Um, that it's important in, in building a healthy lifestyle for your children for the rest of their life. If you start them as infants eating healthy, they're going to eat healthy as seven-year-olds and as teenagers and for life. Because That's what that book is about? 
Yeah, it's about feeding your kids. There's also, for their parents, there's also a margarita recipe in the back. Oh. Because <laughs> it Again? is called, as I say, it's called baby love. It's not about making babies, but. <laughs> you're, you're fa and by the way, you've run mar half marathons, marathons. You've run all kinds of races, right? I've run half marathons. And the Mar-, mar uh, the Bro I ran mar the Brooklyn half. There, you, yeah, I ran the Brooklyn. Oh, that's the, and there's the Philadelphia. I ran, I've run two half marathons, so. And the I drinking try. is after? <laughs> I don't drink after I run, because that, that's not a good idea. But when I'm not running, I do enjoy a nice glass of wine or a margarita. And by the way, your favorite recipe? My favorite recipe, favorite recipe. in here? I mean, butternut you on the squash. Spot. I asked the hard so, questions. Yeah. There's <laughs> Alba's chicken noodle soup is something I still eat to this day, because I love chicken noodle soup. Especially, you know, as it gets cold out, it's a good thing to have, especially got it. when you've got a cold. Uh, you're also involved in some important causes. I am. I sit on the board of the International Women's Media Foundation. Um, we recognize women around the world, journalists who are trying to expose corruption, whatever it may be, who put their own lives at risk. These are some of the bravest women I have ever met. It's an organization I just got involved in as I came here to New York. I also do a lot for multiple sclerosis. Uh, and back in Washington, D.C., sit on that board, people who have multiple sclerosis. It's affected my family. So it's an organization that I'm involved in. And Whatever I can do to help. How about military families? You come from a military background? I do. I come from a military background. Describe um, that. Well, my parents, my father's from Staten Island, and my mom is from Queens. And Whoa. Uh, you do not have an accent, not that I generalize. Well, let me explain. I'm from, hold on. I'm from okay. New Jersey, so okay. I can. Yeah. Where's your, uh, Well, here's why. Because my dad was, uh, while well, he was in med school down at St. Vincent's in the West Village, he was drafted into the Army during the Vietnam War. And then he stayed in for 30 years, was a doctor in the Army. So we lived all over the world. So lived in Germany and mostly grew up in Texas. So I you know, went to middle school and high school uh, in Texas. But I think one of, and now my, I have a younger sister who's a surgeon who's also in the U.S. Army. So um, my family does a, a, tries to do a lot now for military families. Certainly my sister is helping wounded warriors recover. Um, but my parents have been involved in causes helping our military, and there's, I think, no greater need than people that are returning who've been serving in the longest war in American history. I think they're sometimes forgotten our wounded warriors, and as much as my job in the media to bring attention to the service and sacrifice of them, we start, try and do a lot of those stories. Before I let you out of here, mm -hmm. you've accomplished a great deal in, in media and journalism broadcasting. When were you pretty sure that this was the world you wanted to go into professionally? You know, it's interesting because um, I don't remember this, except that my parents, because my dad was in the military, we were always reading the newspapers. And I, re I can remember, you know, as a teenager being embarrassed because my mom would let the newspapers stack up because she wanted to read every little bit of the newspapers. We always had the Journal uh, of Medicine everywhere, magazines and Time and National Geographic. So that was part of growing up, you know, the news. And friends have told me that I used to, you know, imitate Barbara Walters when I was a young girl, take the bench that was at the end of the, of the bed and, and imitate Barbara Walters. So I think it was something I grew up in college. You know, I thought maybe I wanted to go into medicine. I thought maybe I wanted to be a lawyer. And then I got an internship uh, in the news business. And then it clicked. And I started off as a, a print journalist. So you know how sometimes people say it's something you've wanted to be for a long time you end up being? I think it was, it was there from a very early age. One more quickie. The one interview you haven't done yet that you really want to do is? Well, Kim Jong-il of North Korea, uh, Vladimir Putin of, of Moscow, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, wait a minute, hold we on. Went, <laughs> not that they have any, not that, sorry, Justin Timberlake, you have nothing in common with Kim Jong-il, but I think you're great. But there are <laughs> questions to ask Justin Timberlake. Oh, yeah. yeah he so does you, very few interviews. So, Justin, if you're listening, um, give me a ring. I think you have a better <laughs> shot at Kim Jong-il. Uh, <laughs> Nora O'Donnell, a co-host of the CBS Morning News with our, our colleague here in public broadcasting, Charlie Rose, and the great Gail. Gail King. She's yes. the best. And congratulations to Charlie Rose on his Emmy for his PBS and CBS interview of President Bashar Assad of Syria. Look congratulations you. to PBS. You're a great colleague. Yeah. By the way, could you tell Gail that we have the heating fixed here <laughs> in public broadcasting at the Tish WNET studio? Could you tell her that? I will. I and will tell her. And you love our studio. I do. This is incredible. All right. Beautiful. You're very fortunate. Tell her Neil Shapiro, the boss, got everything fixed. She and by the way, back. Neil Shapiro hired me at NBC, one of the greatest, greatest guys. He has an eye for talent. Yeah. Good That's guy. why we're here. Very good guy. <laughs> Thanks, Nora. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks Thank so you. much. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. That's funny. To see more one on one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at infocaucusnj.org. 
find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. I am honored. We are honored in public broadcasting to have uh, Joy Behar, comedian, television personality, just an entertainer, political satirist. Bon vivant. Yes, all that. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm good. We're honored to have you on PBS. Thank you. It's awesome. my favorite. You know, I watch, I do watch on, PBS. No, a lot. No, seriously. I watch all Masterpiece Theater, all Masterpiece Mystery. I watch the Roosevelt series. Um, I watch everything on PBS that I can, particularly I, the, the British imports are my faves. What about at night? Charlie Rose, Tavis Smiley, myself? Yeah, yeah, also. Yeah, yeah thanks. No, uh, seriously, but I'm a big, big PBS fan. I want well, everybody to know that out over here. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah. And we're a big fan of yours. I, um, one of the most fascinating things to me, and I was just telling you right before we got on the air, I was listening to you, of all the things you do, I think you're filling in one day doing uh, serious. Uh, radio, you're doing seriously Sinatra. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking she goes in, she does Sinatra. She knows a lot about music. She's having fun with this show. She does all kinds of You're working on a one person. I have a solo show, yeah, that's on, opening. Uh, well, Am I plugging, by the way? No, I'd love to plug it. <laughs> Go ahead. November 6th, it starts a run at the Cherry Lane Theater. Opening night will be November 23rd, so there'll be previews, but people could come November 6th, Cherry Lane Theater, down in the village. My first stomping grounds, when I first started that. being a comedian, I started down there. You know, the gay audience is my best. They were great. They laughed at everything. They got it. Why did they, they get were you? supportive. Why did they get me? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. They just got you. They did. They did. And when you came here, well, tell folks, you were born and raised where? Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Italian. Italian girl. You know, when I was in Williamsburg, when I grew up, it was like, you know, all Italian, surrounded by Hasids and Hasidic Jews and like that, but an Italian pocket. And then there were the Polish in Greenpoint. Very ethnic, very working class. Now, you know, at that time, only like sailors had tattoos. Now everyone does, right. you know? Right. And it's very hip now. It's a yuppie land. When I was there, I used to hang out at a mozzarella store. In the mozzarella store. Not in it, but around, on, yes. in front of it. And on the people... box where they make the mozzarella. It's so funny. Uh, when you were doing the show, the HLN show. Yeah. And I used to enjoy doing that with you. That Loved was a great having show. you. That was a great show. Thank you. Uh, they made a mistake, but that's another story. I know. Yeah, uh, they canceled me. What's up with that? I don't know. You know what they say, Steve? The show must go off. <laughs> yeah, really the good ones, right? They should have kept it on. Everybody agrees, but you can't go back again to that. You know, it was what it was, and it was great. What's up with you and network folks? I mean, you had the great, how many years of the run on The View? 16 years on The View. And managed, uh, would you say the personalities were challenging there? When I was there? <laughs> oh yeah, but you know, when you put a bunch of broads together, you're gonna have some, uh, some challenge. Some fun stuff, you know. look at you. They're all talented, oh there, they're looking. Yeah. Talented women, everyone. Loved it? I did. I had... All 16 years? No, no, there were years when I was ready to quit. But really? I, you know, yeah, there were years where I was like, oh, I can't take this anymore, moments. But generally, every job's like that, isn't it? I mean, I was a teacher, I wanted to quit. Yeah, why don't you talk about that? You started out as a teacher. I started out, well, no, I started out at the uh, employment council for the New York State Employment Service. Oh, you were not. Down in Brooklyn on Skirmahone Street, yeah. That's where I was. <laughs> I mean, that was crazy. One, a guy used to, like, clip his toenails at the intake <laughs> desk. That was, there's the people who work there. <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> And then, Are you doing shtick with me now? No, I'm telling you the so truth. So I was a guy who worked there. Who worked there, yeah. It Go was ahead. like very, very weird. Yeah. And then after that, um, <laughs> uh, my husband, I was married at the time. Then we went to uh, Rhode Island because he was a college prof professor. And right. then and that was during my first read it, wanting to, you know, kill myself because it was just like, oh. You in Rhode Island, huh? Oh. They get you? They got me. Who the Rhode Island is lovely place, but not for the girl from the shtetl. Not for a girl from the neighborhood. It's not for I me. know, by the way. Although there are plenty of Italians in Federal Hill in Providence. But they're different. Why are they different? What's the matter with them? Well, I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I, I, I've been up there. I swear they're different. But yeah, they're different. The Italians are different everywhere. I just think that. That's so, true. So give me the, so where the school teacher thing comes from? The school teacher, well, so I got my degrees, you know, and I became a school teacher. I taught English, uh, high school English. Mm. And that was a tough job. I give, you know, a lot of credit to teachers. And then, uh, then I became, uh, I, you have to come and see my solo show. It's called Me, My Mouth, and I. Me, My Mouth, and I. Yeah. You write it? The whole thing? I wrote it, right. The whole thing, created yes, it. hour and a half. It's got pictures, it has pictures of my family, it has pictures of things from The View. It's, it's I got a slideshow. Why did you decide to do this? The, because you know what, like I reached a certain age and I have something to tell people. You sure do. Yeah. And is the message, let me, I, I hate to ask what's the message because I'm sure there are lots of messages. Yeah. The one thing about you that always, when I think about 
the fact that not just you make me laugh and you make me think, is that you are an incredible, um, survivor is such a stupid term. You're tough. You don't, not only don't you take people's crap, but you just keep coming back. <laughs> What's up with that? Uh, you know, I was very much loved as a child in my family. My aunts, my uncles, my mother, even my father, who basically ignored me, loved me. You too? <laughs> okay. Didn't they all ignore <laughs> us? It, it, hey. they, go ahead. He was playing the ponies. You know, he had no time for me. But Mine were... What? Poker, but go ahead. Your family played poker? No, I know my father, but Your go ahead. father, but they, they're Italian men. They love to gamble. Gin, poker, go ahead. My mother used to say, I wish she would cheat on me, as if you had to have, you had <laughs> you to have, have a, a vice. No, you had to have a vice. It's like, you know, she couldn't fathom, like, there would be no vices whatsoever. But and if there was a vice... She'd rather he cheated than he gambled all the money. Oh, my... It made her crazy, you know? <sighs> so, uh, but anyway, so to answer your question... Yes. You know, when you're a, a treated well as a child, which I was, you develop a strong inner core of self. And I, I, I don't take crap from people, no. Can't but that doesn't mean that I had an easy time becoming the person that I am. As you'll see in the show, I do talk about there are many, many pitfalls along the way, many obstacles, because I was lacking in a certain amount of confidence, too. Yes. You? Yes. Yes. You know nobody watching in public television is saying, yeah, I see it. They come don't and, see it. Uh, come and see the show. You'll see. I mean, it was not easy for me. You know, uh, you know some people say, well... I was a girl, you know, I was raised as a girl. Comedians, women were not comedians very often. You had Toady Fields when I was growing up a little bit. Joan, of course, rest in peace. Poor Joan. I can't even talk about it, the Joan Rivers. It's such a sad thing. I mean, you know, she was 81 years old and nobody lives forever, but to go like that, if she had all that plastic surgery, everybody thought, oh, she's gonna die from something like that, and then to just die accidentally from some crazy thing that they did to her, which it's, we still don't know what that was. No, but let me ask you this. Her career yeah. mean a lot to you? Oh, yeah. She was a great role model. I oh, mean, so. well, because she, she was a worker. She, you know, she used to say to me, Joy, g d work while they still want you. you know? <laughs> She'd tell me that. Uh, you know, uh, I said to her one time, uh, you know, why do you worry about this vacant calendar? Excuse me. I'm sorry for interrupting. We're watching, I'm watching a piece of work, right? Yes. And she opens up the book. Yeah. And I, I tell my wife this. She gets upset when I say this. I said, Jen, look at this. We, I made her stop on that scene. She opens it up. There's the book. There's nothing there. Joan Rivers is looking at it. She, she says, this is my worst nightmare. The worst nightmare. Nothing's there. My wife said, why do you I said, because what happens when no one wants you? <laughs> is it me or that's bad feeling? Which? That when no one wants yes. you? Yes. Well, I mean, you mean professionally? Yes. It's like the worst. And I saw Joan Rivers and I'm thinking, mm -hmm. does that never end? The desire to be... Well, she, she, I said to her, Joan, it's okay if there are empty spaces on the calendar. You don't have to work every minute. And she said, oh, you have a boyfriend. <laughs> Meaning that you have somebody to do something to do uh, with your life. Have a boyfriend. Sure. Or, but, you know, she had a, a, a daughter. She was a devoted parent and sure. grandparent. She had a life. At one point, she had a, a boyfriend who had, who had only one leg. She said, there's more room in the bed for me. <laughs> she was funny. She really was funny. But you clearly do have a different... <laughs> while you love to work... Boy, what a great shot. Love oh, there we shot. are. Yeah. Um, while you love to work, you do have this very full life, and you do talk about it in the play, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, your full life. Um, do people around you, are they okay with how candid you are about... Because sometimes my family gets upset when I make reference. To, I'm sure my mother's going to be upset because I said the thing about my father. I'll hear about it later. Um, is he alive? Yes, he is. Oh, your father's yeah, still yeah, alive? Yeah, I'll hear about it. Don't worry how about it. How old is your father? He's 81. He's, oh. That's right. Yeah, but let me ask you. You're younger so, than you look, I think, Steve. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm teasing you. Why do you hurt me like this? I'm teasing you. Why did you, you have white hair, you know? You, you, you give me a shot like no, that. I'm I, teasing you. you. Let's edit this you're part out. You're very handsome. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry, what'd you say? Um, <laughs> your family ever get upset about the things you say? No. No, not never. They used to say, just go for it. Tell it. Tell whatever you want. Are you serious? Yeah. An Italian family. Yes. Say it? That's right. The, the talk outside the family? Yes. They were not the mob. <laughs> They're just an Italian family. I love it. And always supportive of, of your dreams. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they didn't, they didn't know what, you know, they couldn't help me any more than they did. Right. But they were not people who were like, oh, you can't do it. I never heard that. So let me ask yeah. you, as an entrepreneur. And still, but, and still it was hard. Isn't that funny? Give me, give me I an still don't know 100% the reason. But because, I mean, you know, a psychologist would probably say, well, your father wasn't particularly supportive. He wasn't, you know. He was out, gone, you know. Sure. A lot of times I think girls are more successful when their fathers have a hand in their uh, upbringing. When they're there for them and they tell them how beautiful they are, how smart, when the father says it. That's interesting. Yeah. So what I'm curious about with you is you're, you're going out and doing the, the one person 
Play. Yeah. By the way, plug it again where it is. It's down at the Cherry Lane Theater. Starts November 6. It's called Me, My Mouth, and I. Yeah. Do you say to yourself, while I'm doing this and it's very important and I'm creating it and it's mine and yeah. I want people to come see it, there's another part of you, I, said, I, I ask myself, does, does Joy want one of the network shows to come after and say, we want you, come back, we want you to do a show? Because you could. Know. Is there a part of you that wants to be asked again to do a, an opinion show that's entertaining and fun? Oh, yes. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Your own thing. Yeah, I would like to do that. I mean, it was it was harder for me to be on The View when I had my own show because when you're running your own show... I remember you're running back and forth. It's a little hard. It's hard to, to be a part of a group. But, I mean, I could do either one. But, yes, I would love to have another show like I had on HLM. We had so much fun on that show. People loved it. So maybe someone will give me a show like that. But, you know, we'll see. Do you aggressively... I'm not exactly, like, pursuing it vehemently Oh, right you're not? Now. No. I'm doing this now. What about a book? I wrote a book one time. You know, somebody said to me, I have one book in you. It's true, I'm not a, really a writer. When did, you, when did that book come out? Oh, years ago, 1997 or 8. And you're trying to tell me you don't think there's more to tell? Well, I'm telling it in the show, okay, Steve. Okay, I got it. You know, it's, it's sitting down and writing, that's hard. For you? It's hard work. I don't have discipline to but sit you, at the desk and write. But you both I know, but that's different. It's talking, it's writing, it's doing. It's different okay, from before, sitting. Before I let you out of here, people yeah. are going to say I didn't ask you this. Uh, Rosie, love her? Rosie uh, O'Donnell. Clooney? Clooney? Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> I love a lot of Rosies. My mother was a Rosie. Rosie O'Donnell, love her. Yes, I love Rosie. She's a good girl. And Whoopi? Love. Love. Love them all. And Barbara? Yes, of course. Love. Barbara gave me the job. Barbara gave you the job. And, and, and uh, the Hasselback girl, you love her. Ah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't going to catch her. No, no, she's fine. You know, we used to fight politically all the time, but we never, it was never personal. It's just politics. It's just politics. Listen, uh, you Made honor us by exciting, being here. Right? And uh, by the way, go see Joy in her one act play. Well, excuse me, one, one, one woman play. Right. Terrific. Joy, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Good luck with this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, County College of Morris, New Jersey Council of County Colleges, MD Advantage, activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chess Challenge, TD Bank, and by PSE&G. Promotional support provided by Commerce Magazine and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. New Jersey is a leader in solar power, and PSE&G is doing its part. With 24 solar installations in New Jersey, projects that are giving landfills new purpose and turning former brownfields green, solar powers more than our homes and schools and businesses. It powers our economy by creating jobs right here in the Garden State. PSE&G, proud to support New Jersey.